lot of people nowadays, them cannot seem to satisfy. You understand? Them want to hang them basket higher than where they can reach it at all times. And therefore, then we always crick them neck and broke them foot because and say them cannot satisfy. Back in the day, uh, a lot of poor people were poor, but they had principle, they had pride, they had integrity, they had dignity. So a person we poor are hungry and you not know. You can't know because them know how to hold them own. Them know how to tamp and crooked and cut straight. Them know how to suck salt to wooden spoon. And them know how to hold it and burn them belly. Nowadays, not at all. Not at all. Everybody want everything. You ask some people. Some people are calling for help. What you need? Oh, I want a TV. A TV is not a need, miss. A TV is not a need. You, you don't much watch TV. TV is not a need. Oh, what you want? You want a wardrobe. Wardrobe is not a need. A wardrobe. Is, you can't pronounce it not to have it. Wardrobe is not a need. You know. A washing machine is not a need. You know. Unless you want more laundromat. Unless that you plan for do. And so I find that, you know, growing up a certain type of way has taught people how to burn your belly, how to do with what you have, how to not bad mind other people for them things. Because a lot of people right now, I think the generation or the time that we're in right now, a lot of people are not coping or are unable to cope because they just want everything and yeah. You understand? So you call and beg somebody for help. Boy, you want? I want three bungla Brazilian. <laughs> what you say you want? You want three what, miss? Boy, you know some day, uh, where you want? I want a Bridget slippers. What you say? You want what? Where you want? You know some day, look at out if you go out and run, Robin. How is that a want? How is that a need? So there, there are needs and there are wants, right? And I just want to, you know, hear from the people who you grew up poor, but the poverty has made you into a strong man or a strong woman, a woman of integrity, dignity, a man of integrity and dignity. And growing up poor, what are some of the lessons that you have learned, you know, from all oh, you grow? As I say, you have some people who are ashamed of all them grow. But then again, you grow a certain way and I eat push your toe and I eat make you strive here now. You understand? Because I tell you, some of them parents here, yeah, where I pile them picnic, yeah, they might come back after no years. I'm telling you, because a lot of these kids nowadays, and some of these young adults, and some of these adolescents, and the people that are in their 20s and so, I'm telling you, this sense of entitlement is going to be the death of our society. Because a lot of them, they don't understand how you come by things. And I one thing my granny always say, easy come, easy go. When you don't work for something, you don't know how to appreciate it. And even when you give them the help, let me just tell you this. A croft with a million dollars is still a croft. A croft with a million dollars is still a croft. Because some of the times it's not that people don't, they don't need money. What they need is psychological intervention. They need help. Okay, because it's all about your mindset. And if your mindset doesn't change or your mindset is not developed and elevated, you are forever going to be in wants and needs. So I could have taken up a billion dollars and drop it in your lap like manna from heaven. Me, me tell you this, if you don't have a good mindset and you don't have the ambition and you can't buy ambition a road, you understand? It don't make no sense. And sometimes people are doling out monies and doling out gifts on people who really and truly, yeah, cast our pearl before swine. Yeah, we have poured upon uh, poured upon blackboard. Yeah, put egg in a floor house because they don't know how to manage. They don't know how to deal with it. And let me just say big up to Miss Dana. Big up Auntie Dana and her, you know, her show, her program. And I, I, I've, I've seen snippets of it and, you know, I've watched some, poor, me can't stay the whole time, but, you know, when me watch, I look at, you know, you see certain things that go on and stuff like that. And I know her heart is in, a, in the right place in trying to help because there are people who genuinely need the help. And I really respect her for that. And to know that Auntie Dana of our pity them, of our family, where well, she not fear to them something I really actually do later. Because in our nice clean house, cook up our food for our nice clean furniture and relax 
relaxing into her hasty. She has taken it upon herself to get up and go and help people. But what I want to say is that there's a difference between helping and enabling. I am not going to, I'm all for helping because there are some people, as I said, who are genuinely in need of help. But some people, no matter how much you give them, because they don't have the right mindset, they're forever going to be in wants and needs. And also, I know that, as I said, there are some people who, because of childhood trauma, because of some adult trauma as well, their mindset needs to be altered and needs to be elevated. So really and truly, mind, they need, to, they need intervention and they need somebody really and truly to help and guide them. They need some therapy. They need some psychological help, not necessarily monetary help. Okay, because at the end of the day, as I say, a crop with a million dollars is still a crop. And so if your ways poured upon blackboard, you cannot expect a dog to move. You cannot expect a cow to bark. It don't work like that. And so we have to really uh, start to look into, do I need to give you money? Do I need to give you food? Or do I need to give you some psychological help so that when you teach somebody to fish, you feed them forever. But when you give them a fish, you only feed them for now. I don't see why people are healthy and strong and they have all their faculties in place. Okay. And my thing is, if your waistline is active, that means that you can go work. You understand? I don't know if your ovaries are overactive or I don't know. Yeah, you can go look at work. You can go look at work. But again, it comes back, Damien, to a lot of people, they don't want a job. They want the handout. And if you tell them or introduce them, okay, so let me see your resume. Could you give me your resume, please? You know, what skills do you have apart from having the children? Because obviously your master, that skill there. Yeah, you're, you're, you're lucky in for that skill there. You understand? And you're special to that car. You said broke it and set it back and put it in a chaos. You, you, you know the part there. So outside of that skill, what else do you have? So I am all for helping. But at the end of the day, you have some people. I already start them 20 times. Yeah, dear man, you know you have some family are foreign, right? And the people that are foreign, big up put yourself up on a job where I send money come to Jamaica, right? Because it's not easy. And when people make a sacrifice and send their money to you, you have to respect that, right? So there are some family members who can testify to this. Them send money to them family, them, them family call them, boy, you know, say, mo want to sell some something. Them send down some bottom body works, them send down some clothes. The money, them, them send them come, them start it for one week or two, then the money mash up. All right, them come back again, them want to raise some fall. All right, them buy them some chicken, then buy them some things. That go on for about three weeks, then the money, them want it mash up. Then them come back again, boy, them want to start a car wash. The family send them money again, and then by one month, car wash mash up. Then they want to start. They might look at source where them can suck out and they have a parasite mind. Because how is it that somebody gives a start and then you just mash it up? So to my mind, some of them, it's their mind that needs to be rewired so that they can function. What is it in life? Why, how is it that you are your own obstacle? How is it that you are your, own, your biggest obstacle, your biggest impediment in our life? Some people are them are their own worst enemy, you know? Them talk about people that fight them. Them talk about people grudge them. People bad man. No, girl. You're bad man yourself. No, sir. Nobody not chuggle you. You are chuggling yourself. Okay? But it all has to do with the mindset. And because a lot of people are growing up now in an era where you can take to social media and when you show me the picnic them, the people them are going to them are to go weak out and them are going to cry and them are going to send the money. And you, just, you, you know, it reminds me huh? when the, the Christian people them used to go down to Africa. And all the time when they want to say they dig a well, they ever show the bang belly children them. And were malnourished and they ever have a one fly upon them. And they may always ask the question, lady, why you film the little boy with the fly on his leg? the box of the fly before you flip it it's like when you walk with that one fly there you know one matches box and set it by the pit of them for grief people art can you know say when we see the bang belly i will see the sufferation i will see the fly kind of one fly that they can look a movie for himself right people are going to be empathetic but at the end of the day you cannot enable parasitic behavior it's like you have your child in your house. If not going to work, she's not going to school. They're not doing nothing at all. I hear the pan, Lord, let him alone. I'm my belly pain. Leave him. Me with my name. Leave him. You're not helping the situation. Is it that the person needs therapy? 
Is it that they need to see a psychiatrist? Is it that they need some counseling? Because if you keep making the same mistake, something must be wrong. So what, let us find out what is wrong. So you have to clean up from inside out. Because no matter what you do, and you could have put the nicest plate of food in front of them. If them love them off a banana trash at us, that them are going to eat them can't appreciate certain things. And then again, guys, we have to come to the realization, you know, that sometimes we dream bigger for people than they dream for themselves. Sometimes we have bigger dreams and aspirations for people than they have for themselves. Sometimes when dirty dish toilet on table cloth, it's on a pest to the table. Some people you have to just leave them where they, where they are and help them from far. And I'm saying that some people want a start and some people want a help. You have a lot of these people nowadays, they don't want to start. You don't want to start doing nothing. You don't want to start doing anything. You want to start beg some more. And you want to start the sympathy and the pity party. You not come out and say, you know, say, I want to shop on. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, hard work takes a lot of sacrifice and discipline that a lot of them don't have. And there are many days you may not feel to come to work. There are many days I may not feel to come to work. There are many days a lot of people overseas will work them three jobs. And not every day if you go to work. But you have to be disciplined. You have to be committed to your commitment in order to be successful. And a lot of them are not willing to. The one discipline them have. Better could you tell me. Think about it. I'm going to take the break and then the idea then I'll go to afternoon. Yeah, I'm taking a break. One discipline they have. We're going to talk about it right here on Miss Kitty Live. <laughs>